Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, archiving your projects in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, there are times when you're done with a project and you need to move it off of your system or hand it off to someone else. And the project manager inside Premiere Pro is a great tool for doing that. In doing that, you're gonna make a few choices, whether you're copying or consolidating or trimming or doing a lot of different things. The good thing is the project manager has grown up quite a bit and it's really powerful. Let's go have a look. So here I've got a project uh, from Waiting for Lightning and I'll go to the file menu project manager and it brings up the new project manager now we only have one sequence selected that was the one in the foreground if i want all of them then i'll select all of these sequences if this sequence here had a nested sequence in it it's not going to automatically be picked up so you have to make sure you go in and make sure you grab the ones you want the two big differences in the resulting project are collecting files or consolidating and transcoding. What that simply means is collecting files is gonna take the full uh, folders and clips and everything you have and then put them into a new location. Consolidating and transcoding moves them over to a new location but also changes their format, gets them into all the same format. This is really useful if you need to hand this off to someone who maybe doesn't have uh, the codecs that you have for this video or you're not really sure what you're going to be editing on 10 to 5 years from now and you want them to be a nice, beautiful, pristine format that's common as it goes out. We also have more options when we consolidate and transcode. But let's look at collect files and copy to a new location. On the right hand side we have some options. For instance, exclude unused clips. I'm going to turn this off and down at the bottom I'll calculate this project. So the available space is 67 gigs, the original project is 34 gigs, the resulting project is 32 gigs. So the excluded clips are in the bin, they're, they're actually in the project manager, they're just not in a timeline. Watch what happens when I exclude those and recalculate that and we're down to 17. So obviously there's some big, um, I think, R3D red files that are being used down there. Back to the options. We can include audio conform files and preview files. These are the things that Premiere Pro is automatically making and you can include those so the, the person that receives these, they don't have to recreate them. You can also rename the media files to the clip names if you like to do that. There's no hard and fast rules. Um, if you've renamed the clips in here, when it, when it uh, copies them over, it's going to rename them the exact same. All right, if we go to consolidate and transcode, we've got three options in here. We can use the sequence, individual clips, or preset. When we choose sequence, we don't have format options. It's just going to consolidate and transcode these based on the sequence. And it's gonna use the frame size, frame rate, field type, pixel aspect ratio of the selected sequence. It transcodes the matching clips to these settings. If clips don't match, they're only copied and not transcoded. Okay, that's important. If we go over to individual clips, now we get some different formats in here. DNX HD, which is cross-platform, and we can also match the source in here. You can choose MXF OP1A, which is also a very nice, robust, big format. AVC Intro, these are big files, not highly compressed, but they look great. And we can also go to QuickTime and use Cineform. There's also a button over here to import a preset, which will load a preset inside here. Now, when we're looking at individual clips, it uses, again, the frame size, frame rate, field type, and pixel aspect ratio of the individual clips in the sequence and transcodes them using their individual settings. When the source can't match, then it's copied. And, this, and same with preset. If, it, uh, has a, if you're choosing a format and the clip doesn't match that format, it will copy that. So, okay. Um, we will also not be bringing over After Effects dynamic linked comps. So, big warning there. This will collect the project. Your After Effects comp will be sitting in the timeline as a, a linked 
clip, but your After Effects comp is somewhere else. So it's always a good idea once you project manage and move it over there, close this project up and open that up again. In fact, it's even a better idea to take the copied project and open it on a completely different computer. Um, now you'll know if you have all the pieces you need to make to open that and run it later on. All right, so with consolidating and transcoding, uh, by the way, we can go to the presets now too, and now we've got even more choices of presets for each one of these. And then the QuickTime format. Let's choose Cineform GoPro, and if we have any transparency, uh, we're going to need to turn on the alpha channels. I'm just going to choose 10-bit here. Cineform, uh, GoPro Cineform is licensed by Adobe. It's included inside Premiere Pro. It's cross-platform, and it's big and beautiful. When I, when I keep talking about big and beautiful and pristine, it means that instead of a highly compressed format like AVC HD, we now have a big, beautiful format that's just going to play back much better. It doesn't convert a 5D file into anything better. It just It's great for archiving later on, opening up. Um, also good for visual effects if somebody wants to do that on the other end. Now that we're consolidating and transcoding, we have more options in here, like including handles. So this transcoding, if I have a five minute clip, but I only used one minute of the clip, it's going to trim that project. And in this example, put 24 frames on the, on the head, 24 frames on the tail, so you can change the edit a little bit. The rest of that clip is gone and will not be copied. If you don't want to do that, don't consolidate and transcode. Just move all of the files. You can also convert image sequences now to a video clip. So it will render this to a new clip, again, based on this format. You can also convert After Effects comps to clips. This is useful if you um, are unsure of whether the person that's going to open this up later, which may be you in 10 years, you won't have that version of After Effects, the fonts needed, the, the plugins that were used. Now it's going to play back as a clip. Let's go and calculate the resulting project here. So from 34 gigs to two gigs, and I'm using all of my sequences here. So there's a lot of choices. There's no right or wrong. It's just, you have to pick the right choices based on what you want, based on the job, based on how important all of the files are inside here. All right, so hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please click on the subscribe button to Video Revealed. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, then get on over to adobe.com and download your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith. It's my job to get you looking your best.